Welcome to Resource Review from here at the Science Museum in London. Our aim is to help you choose resources that will make a real difference to your teaching. Today we'll feature resources for primary numeracy. The resources we'll be looking at are Mass Mansion and Interactive CD-ROM produced by Forelearning and Motivational Maths, a book of activities published by PrimeEd. And later, with the help of our panel, we'll be discussing how effective these resources are for the teaching of primary numeracy. But first, let's have a look at these resources in action. We visit Fitzjohn's Primary School in Hampstead, where Pete Vinovitz is teaching his Key Stage 2 Year 4 class about perimeter and area. We begin by looking at the Maths Mansion CD-ROM from 4Learning. Maths Mansion is an interactive numeracy CD-ROM set in a Gothic mansion. Players are trapped inside and are only able to work their way out by solving the maths problems which are presented to them. Let's see how Pete and his class found the resource. Press enter. Yes, six centimetres. I used uh, Maths Mansion, uh, which was a series on Channel 4. This is the CD-ROM. To solve, and we're going to do this at the end of the lesson, to solve the tricks by finding the perimeter the particular area we're doing today is perimeter and area, so if I click on there, um, immediately I have the option for a video to come on, which could be used as part of an oral mental session um, at the beginning of a lesson. And as you can see, <laughs> we've got this really fun animation. Quite a good resource, really, not um, terribly suited to, towards sort of direct teaching in terms of uh, main class, but um, really useful for small groups for picking up how children are interpreting your main teaching. Um, it's really, really good. It's the kind of thing that a, a, a child could use to solidify and cement work that you've done in class at home because it has that sort of gamey feel to it, you know, choose a shield, um, choose a name or a nickname. And I guess the whole point of the CD is to, to make maths fun. 10. So 10 from there plus something equals 20. So A equals 10 plus A equals 20. What do you need to add on to 10 to make 20? Okay. Oh, Max is way ahead of me. So what's the perimeter? Now that you've got the A and you've got B. It's quite a tough resource. I think if, um, if a child hasn't picked up on the main points of a lesson, to throw them into this unguided would be cruel and unusual punishment, really. But um, no, generally, it is, um, it's for children who have generally got the main point that you can leave them independently, check up on them from time to time. My attention as a teacher is drawn to children who are making incorrect answers because I can hear the noise, so immediately I can pinpoint which children are having difficulty pretty graphic representations of what I'm trying to achieve in a maths lesson in terms of splitting up a shape into rectangles and then finding out the perimeter and the, the, the area of each. So it's very, very visual. OK, let's add A onto it. 4 plus 12 is? 16. 16 plus 8 is? 24 plus 16 is? It's 56. Ah, you don't need my help. We've just seen the Maths Mansion interactive CD-ROM demonstrated in the classroom. And now to discuss it with us, we have our resource review panel. Andrew Combe, Deputy Head Teacher of Eastfield Primary School and our Primary Numeracy Specialist. Adrian Jones, who is a freelance education consultant. And Alan Mills, Head of the Affiliation Network Specialist Schools Trust. Welcome to you all. Andrew, if I can come to you first. This CD-ROM is designed to make maths fun for pupils. Do you think it's also a valuable educational resource? Well, I think with, with all ICT, uh, the, the aim of it, it, does it enhance pupils' learning in mathematics? And as the teacher said on the, on the video, what it does help to do is perhaps consolidate some of the learning. There are also other aspects that we, we need to consider. It doesn't give the children the opportunity to be asked uh, questions about area and perimeter. You know, for example, draw me two shapes that have got an area of 10 square centimetres, draw me two rectangles that have got a, a perimeter. So it can help to consolidate the work, but only part of the work with area and perimeter. And also I think with CD-ROMs, the, the teacher was helped there because he had an interactive whiteboard where it could be accessible to all pupils. There are still lots of primary school classrooms that don't have interactive whiteboards. Adrienne, during the, the VT we saw um, the teacher highlighting the fact that the programme alerts when a student's done something wrong. Is that something that we want to do as educationalists with young children? 
Well, if you've got a classroom and individual children or a pair of children working, you can't be at all pairs of children at the same time. So it's useful in the sense that, as he said, it alerted him to where he needed to go next. The children aren't going to put their hands up and say, well, I've got this wrong. And it's a rather subtle way, actually, for him to be given a clue as to where they might need some help. And in fact, the way he drifted in and out showed that the, most of the children that were working had a level of competence and could find their way around the programme. And that's always a good plus point. If the children can independently find their way around a CD-ROM, that shows that it's been fairly well designed. So I think from that point of view, it's something that actually teachers could use with children and know that they can be fairly independent in their own learning. Okay. Alan, any comments you'd like to make? I think I agree it was well designed. I wasn't quite sure about the way it was being used. I and mean, I agree with you about the interactive whiteboard. You can't rely on that and it was necessary to get that going. Personally, I found the, the noise response when something went wrong irritating in a few seconds. Surely it must have irritated the rest of the class as well. So there's things like that. When you use ICT, very many of those, the things that they think are exciting, actually I find in a classroom distinctly depressing. If you're stuck with that noise over and over again, it's going to put you off learning. So it looked like a good CD-ROM, but I don't think it particularly added that much to the resources that teacher clearly had at his answer arsenal already. Now let's look at our second resource, the Motivational Maths book from Prime Ed Publishing. Motivational Maths is a very different and more traditional paper-based resource. But like Maths Mansion, its activities focus on bringing out the magic in maths. It's a photocopyable resource of lesson starters focusing on mathematical tricks. Does it really spark people's imagination and encourage problem solving? Let's return to our class. Max, let's start really easy. What shape have we got? A square. We've got a square. But Max, what's the problem here if you didn't know maths? You'd think there's only one measurement given. All the sides the of a square are the same. Are the same. Motivational Maths by Paul Swan, it's, um, I think it's geared towards higher achievers. Uh, essentially the book is a series of quizzes, games and puzzles that are um, designed to really test the knowledge and application of, of maths, fire investigations for older um, uh, children. What about if I give you one side, oh, let me give you this side here, 19 nice centimetres. Can I find the perimeter? with one measurement. Hands up if you think you can find the perimeter of that rectangle with one measurement. It can be used. Um, I, I was tinkering with um, using it for a perimeter and area uh, puzzle today. Um, uh, and the, the crux of the problem was children had to put together a shape, find the area, and then following instructions, sort of tear it up again and put it together where the area, mystifyingly, was one square centimetre more. And how is that possible? How can you move from 64 square centimetres to 65 just by, you know, cutting up a shape and rearranging it? But also there's something entirely wrong because you can never work out the area with, because you don't have the top line except, except the three centimetres and there, so there won't be anything because you don't have the measurement of the bottom line. For older children it's great, it's hands-on, it's really investigative maths so putting into practice the principles they've learned. For younger children you could, I think you could happily use it in a sort of year four, year five, year six plenary to make kids go wow how did you do that you know because it would really give the wow factor and kids would be like Jeez, that is amazing. I want to learn more about that. Or in terms of older children moving on through, through the key stages into key stage three, sort of saying, hmm, how can I use the knowledge that I've got to solve that problem? Because it's, it is really investigative. So there's, um, there's a huge range of both number activities here as well as shape and space activities that I would actually highly recommend. OK, Andrew, what do you think of the motivational maths book? Well, I have to say I'm not as enthusiastic as the teacher on the video. Um, to me, I had a few problems with the book. Uh, for example, on the start it talks about lesson starters, which I think people might confuse with your mental and oral starter. And also, at the beginning of the book, there's no real link to teaching objectives in, in mathematics. Uh, I thought that detracted from the book as well. Uh, for somebody like myself who's really interested in maths, and I'm lucky I just teach maths all the time, it's the type of book I dip into, find a few... Uh, problems in there that I do with the children in solving puzzles uh, but it's not a book I don't think that many teachers 
uh, would use on a regular basis. If anything, it's the kind of book that you might buy and put in the, in the staff room library. Adrian, um, would you agree with that? I would, totally. Uh, it's very dense, so it would be difficult for it to be a pupil book. I think it's, uh, you know, ten ideas to do for teachers, and for that purpose it's probably quite good, but it may work better with older pupils, but I think it's more, certainly at primary level. Alan, um, but we want to have things that are challenging for students, don't we? I'm not sure if the actual approach of it is particularly challenging. Um, I do think you could pick into it and grab on puzzles and ideas that might be quite exciting, especially if you're not really a specialist maths teacher, you haven't really got that as your approach. I do think there's something about it. It does, it does sort of illuminate the magic of maths, certainly, in, in certain ways, because there are things in it that are definitely exciting and certainly interesting but it's certainly not a core text it's certainly not something which will be used generally it's a drop in have a look at maybe get an idea from and move on rapidly beyond the two resources we focused on here let's have a look and see what else is out there in the market for primary numeracy Andrew is there anything that's particularly caught your eye uh, yeah, uh, Teaching Mental Calculation Strategies in Year 5 and 6, uh, published by Beam Education. And what I particularly like about these resources are they link very clearly with what the learning objectives uh, for mental calculations, but also they have plenty of ideas of how to achieve uh, these learning objectives uh, by children playing games, working either in partner, with partners or in small groups. Uh, I've used these a lot and found them really, really valuable. And do you have another resource, Andrew? Again, Mental and Oral Starters are target boards uh, from Clare Publications. They're just a series, a set of numbers. It could be numbers, uh, tens and units. It could be numbers associated with measurement, uh, fractions, decimals and percentages. And again, uh, often when you're asking children questions in a Mental and Oral Starter, uh, if you don't have a resource, the children forget the first number that you say. Uh, so that again, they're a really valuable resource. Thank you. So to recap, the two resources we've looked at today are the Maths Mansion Interactive CD-ROM from For Learning and the Motivational Maths Activities book from PrimeEd Publishing. So Andrew, of the resources that we've seen, which one would you recommend? I would go for the Maths Mansion uh, because I think there are parts of the CD-ROM which are good uh, for consolidating work that's already been taught by the teacher and on the clip we saw the children did seem involved in their learning uh, and that's always a good thing. Thank you. So our resource review panel recommendation today is Maths Mansion Interactive CD-ROM from For Learning. If you'd like further details on any of the resources from today's programme you can get them from our website at teachers.tv forward slash resource review. Or if you'd like to get in contact with us, you can do so via email, and the address for that is resourcereview at teachers.tv. So all it remains for me to do is to thank our panel. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching. So it's goodbye from me at Resource Review. Goodbye. <laughs>